that became clear very quickly is that Kimberly and I had at least some common interest, and that was on uh, resilience with respect to marginalized children, minority children, children who uh, had many obstacles to overcome and who somehow needed our help and all of our help uh, to overcome those obstacles and to become uh, resilient educationally and to go forth in their life. And Kimberly uh, was very clear in that. What I also remember about Kimberly is that she had a very soft smile very soft voice and just a twinkle in her eye and I used to see her on this campus, I used to see her in this building. This building was very different in those days uh, but I would see her and I always enjoyed uh, our conversations. I don't know whether we really had it, any classes together because by that time Kimberly was pretty far along the line with a lot of her, her coursework. But we did have a kindred spirit with respect to uh, some of the interests of, and that were common to us. I'll share two experiences with you that I remember of Kimberly especially. I remember we had a conversation once, and I don't know if Kimberly remembers this, but Kimberly shared that she had difficulty on this campus finding a place to worship, that she had to find a place where she could go to church where there were people like her who celebrated a God and, and spirituality in the way that she did. And she, I guess she, to, to, she found that in East Palo Alto. Uh, and that, I, that was I was touched by that because in studying uh, resilience, uh, spirituality is very, very important. It's part of how we develop our resilience. It's not just the supporters, it's just not the teachers, but it's also the spiritual people that help us develop the spirituality in ourselves to go forth in life. And Kimberly, uh, I, was, I was just very touched by the way she expressed herself of needing to find spiritual place with people who were like her, who, sh who shared her spirituality. And I found that very, very touching and, and very, very moving. Another experience that I had with Kimberly, and I don't know if Kimberly remembers this, I had a very, very, very telephone call from Kimberly. And she said that she was lonely. Uh -huh. And we had a conversation on the telephone. And I don't know that I could help her with her loneliness, but we talked a little bit about it. But it also left me with the understanding, you know, our students, no matter how resilient they are, no matter how strong they are, no matter how powerful they are intellectually, we all have weaknesses. We all have times when we're lonely and we need other people to support us. And uh, she may not remember the telephone call, but she did reach out. We did have a, a quick telephone call. But that was another thing that brought us together. Kimberly is a very, very caring person. She has taught at all different levels. She has mentored at all different levels. She has written textbooks. She's written a book recently about how you become a early childhood education specialist, the different avenues of, of entry into the profession. Uh, she is a person that really will bring much to our field and has done much to our field and she still has many, many years ahead of her. Uh, and thank you very much, Kimberly, for all the work that you've done for all these years for so many people that uh, just love and care for you in lots of different ways. Thank you. Padilla and Dr. Diane Lee. I want to thank God who makes all things possible. I thank my mom, Mary Duncan, because she taught me to value education and to love helping other people. I thank Dr. Padilla because he nominated me along with Diane Lee and they are very supportive friends. I also thank everyone who is involved with me receiving this award, but there are too many people to name. Now I want to begin my speech talking and focusing on the good in others. This will be followed by how much we should give back to society as other human beings. To begin with this quote, whatsoever things are true, 
Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. This quote means you should focus on the good in life and most importantly, it means focus on the good in people. This quote really applies to people who are different from you in some way that you may not be able to understand. Find loveliness and virtuousness in people who are different from you and think on that. This is not easy to do. I began thinking about differences when I was on Stanford campus in the late 1980s. My experiences at Stanford Graduate School of Education taught me that it's important to appreciate, celebrate, and respect differences. Back then it was already a diverse place and we were challenged to learn about each other, accept differences, and be fair. Stanford set me on a quest to do two things. Help others who seem different than the norm and teach others to appreciate, celebrate, and respect differences. I will likely stay on this quest forever. I invite my Stanford family and those in attendance to come on this journey with me. So what am I doing? I want to help others who are different and marginalized in some way. This was first demonstrated to me by my mom. She helped others even though she was raising my brother and me in impoverished conditions. So now I help others and I follow her example. <laughs> Which brings me to another quote. To whom much is given, much is expected. How can a middle-aged African-American female raised in poverty have much to give anyone? I have my faith, my intellect, my perseverance, and my wisdom gained from the school of hard knocks. I have a wealth of experiences that have given me a full life. So, of the best of those experiences, some of them I found right here at Stanford, interacting with the professors and my fellow students. I have skills and knowledge from my many, many years of education, and therefore I have much to give others. So when, with the plenty that I've been given, I help others, especially my students. At Stanford, I'm known to say that I give birth to a hundred or so students every semester. <laughs> and one of my students said to me, you are a good professor and you are trying to mother us all. Yeah. As a professor for more than 26 years, I have worked with plenty of marginalized and under-resourced students. According to current statistics at Sac State, approximately 10% of students are homeless. 46% are food insecure, and 10 to 12% are seekers of emotional and psychological counseling services. As a body of educators, we have many students to help and a lot of work to do. One of our main tasks besides teaching is to mentor our students, provide them with advice and emotional support. We also have to help them see their own strengths and build their personal agency and self-efficacy and resilience. This is what I do on the job each and every day. But I also make sure not to lower my expectations because that is the biggest disservice to under-resourced students that exists. So as per the previous quote, those of us who have been given much are expected to give back to people and society in general. I, I give back my, in my own way each day in my work and personal life both formally and informally. I model the behavior that I value, trying my best to walk the talk. I teach in an authoritative fashion without lowering standards. I conduct research on, with underserved populations and provide service to organizations that support underserved populations. I sponsor a scholarship for child development students at Sac State with high academic achievement and financial need. I assist students who are homeless, food insecure, and emotionally distressed by connecting them to the appropriate services. I write Own Voices children's literature for marginalized African American children, all children, actually. And as I obtain accomplishments, 
including this GSI, GSE Alumni Award, I helped to rewrite the narrative about African American women. I changed the story for children born to single parents in poverty. And by doing so, I lift our society as Americans. I make the world a better place for all people, especially those who are m marginalized. So to end as I began, I want to thank God, also my husband Chris, and my son Manny, and everyone involved in helping me obtain this reward. There are too many to name. But please know you are appreciated very much. As one of my Sac State colleagues told me, Kimberly, you got this reward, not so much for what you have done in the past, but for what you will continue to do in the future. So when I return to Sac State on Monday, I will continue to teach and nurture my students, continue my research with under-resourced and marginalized populations, and continue to provide professional and personal service. My work is not yet complete. In some ways, this is just a new beginning. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. That was beautiful. That was beautiful.